Here we go, one more time. I'm going to just give you a little bit of what was running through my head after dropping my son off. We was talking about stories again and just thinking about being a writer and uh, what a writer has to do. To, I don't know. I would say to be a good writer, a great writer, but I'm not either one. I'm a good writer. I'll say that. Um, I'm not going to say I'm a great writer. You know, um, most of the people probably haven't read any of my books yet. Um, so a lot, a lot of people have, um, and they tell me good things, so I'm not going to dwell on that too much. But um, in my experience, being a reader and a, a writer, is that um, a lot of uh, your strength comes from your confidence in what you're telling as a story, whether it's comic books, whether it's movies, whether it's novels. And uh, one of the things I was saying to him is very early on, I realized that when I hit writer's block, or when I hit a writer an area as a writer um, in my story, I was like, dang, how do I get past? I mean, because when you think of these stories, these are brilliant people, you know, um, Siri from, from, um, from Black Panther, or Batman, or Iron Man, um, Black Panther himself, you know, these, you know, people in the stories are geniuses. You know, um, they've gone to MIT, they've gone to these prestigious colleges and, you know, if S SATs and colleges acceptance um, uh, measure intellect, then they are really smart, you know, um, and I don't know how that true that is um, because I've met smart people everywhere at, at every school, I've been to over 100 colleges. And um, I've met people that are not as smart as at schools. I don't say dumb or stupid, but you get what I'm saying. Anyway, it's hard to write a smart character if you don't, you know, a genius. If you ain't a genius, how do you even write a genius? And you don't necessarily write a genius. You write what you think a genius would behave like, and you write it convincingly. And so... Um, that's one thing, and that was one of the earlier things. I was like, I really want this character to be smart, you know, but how would he butter his toast? You know what I'm saying? Oh my God, I'm not smart like that. So I don't even know how that person would, you know, drive a car. How would they talk? You know, and, you know, so is everybody talking like Neil deGrasse Tyson? <laughs> All right? So that's one thing. And then, and then the other thing is, you know, coming into a writer's block where these characters that are geniuses, um, get um, stumped. They can't solve a problem. And um, you have to think, what could stump, stump um, a, a genius? You're not a genius. So the things that would stump you, they probably would figure out like, pow, you know, like no time. And you got to think about that. So um, part of it is being convincing in what you write. The other part is just saying, now, yo, the hell with it. You know, not only are you not a genius, are the people who are reading your stories aren't geniuses either. You know, and you're like, oh, snap. So you feel like you get in, um, uh, you feel like you can't write it until you realize your readers aren't geniuses either. So you just have to um, make it seem like, yo, what normally takes... If you say he's a genius, then he's a genius. And so, if you say it was hard to figure out, it was hard to figure out. He was able to figure it out in a quicker time, or she was able to figure it out in a shorter period of time. Um, so, that's what helps you. And then the other realization to me was not only did I, could I do that, but I had the power, or not only should I do that, and that's what I can do, it, I had the power to do it. And, um, that's what I call like being God of your story. And I know it's like a God complex. I'm sorry, Christians, whatever. You know, maybe five percenters got to me in, in high school and I realized, you know, I am God. But whatever you want to take away from what I'm saying is when I say you are God of your story, if I need to destroy this building to stop this killer or if I need a, a so-called act of God to progress my story 
I have the ability and the power to do it as the writer. So I uh, just, at that point, have to make it believable. You can't just have somebody being outrun and lightning strike them and there's no explanation for the lightning strike, the person that they're chasing or the person that they're running from. You got to give a little bit more than that, you know, and you just can't have like a tree fall out of the blue or a car hit them in the street out of the blue. You kind of kind of have to, 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 to make it sound good, but it is it's well within your power as a writer to be able to do all of those things. That's that's one thing. Now I'm gonna roll into something else um, that we were talking about. So I was telling him, you know, I was explaining to him my my um, uh, understanding, and interpretation of like being God of your story. All right. So the next thing that I, I mentioned was, you know, haters. All right. I say that I'm not necessarily a hater, but I have to be sometimes to create and think of things that not many other people think. Like, for instance, I have this story um, coming out that we are really working on and, you know, I'm getting good feedback called uh, The Death Pledge. It's a, it's called Jeff Carroll's The Death Pledge. It's a go, I have a GoFundMe, so you can Google it and check it out. Um, but, and it's, and, um, and it's also got a page on Facebook. So, um, where did I get the story idea from? Well, the story is about a slave that um, comes back to life and starts killing people, okay? Now, that was the primary story where I got that from. I was watching in the early 2000s or when they found, might have found it in the 90s, I'm not sure, late 90s, early 2000s, but they started finding these African burial grounds, these places where Africans were buried. One particularly was in Wall Street, and it, everybody was like, oh my God, these are African people. You can't build no more stock exchange buildings, none of these big corporations over our sacred burial ground. Our Africans was buried here. You can't bury, you can't do nothing, you can't build nothing. You know, it is what it is. And um, they created a memorial, and they came to some type of agreement um, to how to honor these ancestors. And I don't know if they just didn't bury on, I mean, build on the whole land, or they just moved them or created a memorial. I have no idea. All I know, it was a surprise to everybody. They were digging for these buildings. Somebody owned the land, and somebody found African people buried there, and they started checking them out, and they needed um, archaeologists and other people right in New York City. You're like, wow, this is powerful. But you know, somebody had to be buried somewhere. They wasn't. We were. They weren't taking them up to upstate New York. You know, um, back in the day. So there was. There's been a lot of cemeteries right in New York City. You know, some of those buildings had to be like this. The house in Poltergeist just buried on. I mean, built on top of a cemetery, or they've been relocating cemeteries. I don't know what the code is when you find a cemetery, but you know, this one they they changed it. And I'm trying to get to work on time, um, and I'm late. But anyway, I'm about two or three minutes late. Anyway, I just started thinking, I'm all for honoring our ancestors. No question. You know what I'm saying? And now their spirits will live, and their legacies will live forever. And then that last piece started sticking me, sticking with me. Live forever. I was like, dang live forever. And then I started thinking, you know, our ancestors, our dead are not bad. You know, our ancestors are here to, or are there to protect us. Like my grandmother still looks after me. When I run into a problem, I'm going to go to sleep and I'm going to talk to my father or my mother because they are in the spirit world and they are going to protect me, you know, whatever it is, right? So our ancestors are not zombies or demon possessed but hey I was thinking what if one of them is and that's only because my grandmother loved me and my grand, um, my parents love me though I think that they're good but what if this is where the, the hater comes in and how I define like a hater is somebody that constantly goes against you 
to for no reason. They just want to be like, you say left, they say right. Everything should be right. And you be like, why are you even saying that? And they just hating on you because they don't want you to be right. So I have a little of that. And I'm not really a hater. I just think like one, right? So people was like, you know, we should honor our ancestors. I'm like, wait a minute. What if they're, you know, I'm all for slavery. You know what I'm saying? I'm, yo, I would, it's the worst thing ever. You know what I'm saying? Um, like Bill Cosby Planet. They didn't have to poison you. So I'm all understanding that. Don't trust me. I'm not trying to make light of the situation. But I'm just saying, maybe all slaves weren't good. What if there was a slave that wasn't good? And this is where my story grew. So then I had to go back and I had to say, why isn't a person good? What would make him not good? Why would he be bad? Who would he want to go after? Um, why would he come back and kill? Blah, 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 blah. And then I came up with the backstory that, um, you know, he was a, a slave boxer, I'll tell you a story, because it already exists in my um, collection of short stories, Sci-Fi Streets. Um, when I was writing this screenplay, I um, or just thought of the idea, I was like, I can't really write it until I really understand the killer. And um, me exploring the killer's origin became a real exciting story. So um, I uh, wrote this story called Interview of a Monster. And I went through, I created a character that was an investigative reporter like um, X-Files who goes back, um, who's writing for a newspaper in, in Brooklyn. You know, we always heard about the Willoughby. I'm saying it wrong. There's a section in Brooklyn that was um, a, a black city during the time, a black town, black village during the time of slavery, and they had a newspaper. They have a museum for the place and all that, right? So I made him a reporter for that particular newspaper. And um, he, like Solomon Northrup, is a slavery hater. So he finds this story of a boxer who won his freedom during the time of slavery. And so he sells his editor, his publisher, or whatever, on um, going to investigate this boxer called the African King knocking people out Native Americans, white people you name it from America from England, from anywhere because he's, you know, it's barnyard boxing, it's like bare knuckle boxing in the back of the, the back of the barn and he is um, and he is uh, it's like WWF in my story so he goes back and he find, meets this guy and um, the guy is eventually um loses his, his 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 promoter which is his like his former owner a guy who postures himself as his owner but he's you know the guy's free but you know to get fights he needs a white guy still even during the time of slavery so um when the guy dies he gets the the fighter himself the african king or baba gets um taken back into slavery because that happened i don't care if you were free if you saw 12 years a slave South was a dangerous place for black people back in slavery time. So even if he was free, yo, you could get caught, you could get snatched, right? And he got snatched back into slavery, and, and you figure in a six eight black dude during slavery, yo, they, who's you know, who may not be right for work in the fields would really be right for breeding. It make you a big army of big slaves to to. to to work the fields. Let me, let me stop calling them slaves too. I'll say Africans, right? The Africans to work the fields. So he gets thrown into becoming a mandingo, a slave breeding, uh, a, a, a breeder. So this African is um, thrown into slavery as a breeder, right? And, you know, having been free, you know, probably seen things as a fighter and heard people talk to him, had that liberty, he doesn't jive with that well and never takes to it, never sleeps with anybody. And um, uh, this big Mandingo African, just like many other Africans, was um, something that little white girls were curious of, I mean, white women, at the, you know, sheesh, that's why... Wilt Chamberlain was such a carnival attraction, okay, for not just white women, probably all women. So, um, 
the story is one night this, this uh, white girl comes to his cabin and um, tries to offer herself and he turns her down she takes offense she tears her clothes and um, she's with her um, house slave or African girl and tears her clothes and accuses this big man dingo of raping her and of course at the time it was no different than what's going on now Central Park 6 Central Park 5 I think I got the number wrong um, they lynch him and having been accused of raping another African the Africans on the plantation join in on the lynching sort of reminds me of what's going on with Bill Cosby now, right? Uh, or what happened to Bill Cosby. Black people jumped all on him, you know, um, and lynched him too. So this guy goes to death having been falsely accused and seeing his people, uh, other Africans, um, victimize him and, and um, hold him guilty. So this is the person that's buried in, in my cemetery. And the story of the death pledge is um, a recently unearthed African burial ground is discovered in a park in South Florida. And this black college um, sends a group of their fraternity and sororities members, pledges, to spend the night in the cemetery and document and excavate and, uh, all of the Africans that are buried there. And it just so happens that um, this um, slave African boxer, Baba, the African king, is buried there. And in the process, they disrupt his um, grave marker, which is also a burial um, imprisonment tomb. Um, and study Egyptology, you know that the um, obelisk, uh, the Washington Monument, the one that George Washington's um, fans gave him, is a um, Egyptian comedic symbol of resurrection. So um, in my story, the Africans on the plantation know more about their history than we do, so they know this, and they use an upside down obelisk as his grave marker symbolizing the fact that he will never be resurrected again. This black, this bad rapist spirit will never come back again, right? And um, when I say hatred, I mean a deep scrutiny. So here I am scrutinizing Egyptology, I'm scrutinizing African burial grounds, newspapers, just everything to create a, a story. Now, in my mind, I'm creating a killer who's got a chip on his shoulders, but who's not necessarily a bad guy. So, in my own mind, I'm not making uh, equal to Jason or Freddy or, or Leatherface, right? But I am making somebody who's doing some similar things. So when he comes back, he's killing people. But um, you might sympathize with him after you know his story. Um, but anyway, I just felt, you know, I'll use that example to not necessarily pitch this, the movie to you guys, but I'm using it as an example to show you how you have to um, sometimes tap or how I tap into my hate, being a hater, you know, to um, come up with a good story. So using like me being taught by, you know, great, the great African scholars, Dr. Lenny Jeffries, James Small, um, uh, Barbara Wheeler, um, Shashi McIntyre, all these great people um, who taught me to respect the elders, I mean, ancestors. Here I am being a hater saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. What if one of them weren't, wasn't good? All these people in this cemetery that we just found, they're worthy of praise and we're going to play libations for them. Maybe we should find out who they are. And even in that, right, even if there is a Baba that's there, right, he's still worthy of of respect because he was a victim. So, you know, even our, if our most corrupted people during the time of slavery probably have the justification of being mentally ill, 
Um, it was extreme circumstances. So even then, they are probably worthy of praise. So anyway, thank you very much. Tap into your inner hater to come up with those good story ideas. Don't be afraid, you know what I'm saying, to not go there. Go there. I went there. And sheesh. Almost all of my stories have hated. So I am going to, um, I just used this one story as an example. But thank you very much. See you next time on my video blog. This was too long. <laughs>